Hi, in this video I want to show you a book that you can use to learn to write proofs. And this is the book by Fletcher and Patty, and it is called Foundations of Higher Mathematics. Here is the inside cover, Peter Fletcher and C. Wayne Patty, Virginia Polytechnic Institute and State University. Foundations of Higher Mathematics, the second edition. The contents are fairly standard. It starts off with logic and language of proofs. Then it goes on to sets, induction, and combinatorial proofs. Chapter five is on relations and orders. Six is on functions. Seven is on countable and uncountable sets. Eight is on an introduction to groups. And then nine talks about numbers. And there's some answers and hints to some of the problems. Let's start by actually looking at the answers and hints because I think that's really important for a book like this. So it does have some answers and some hints to some of the problems. Let's just turn the page here so we can get a glimpse at what else we have. Here it has hints, 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 a note, a hint, a hint, and a hint. So it gives you a hint as to perhaps the key steps in some of the problems. The book does actually have full proofs in it as examples. For example, here, this is an induction proof where they go through all of the details and they prove this statement is true for each natural number n using mathematical induction. So even though it doesn't seem like it has tons of solutions to the problems, it does have quite a few examples in each section. Here are the exercises for the section on induction. You'll notice there are tons of problems. So this is a good problem book. If you're looking for a book that's gonna give you lots of practice problems, you're gonna get that here. I mean, that's a lot of induction proofs to do. And then over here, you have a couple more that you can do as well. So plenty of exercises if you're looking for exercises. Here's a proof in the section on functions, which is actually pretty good. And you know, if you look at this, it looks intimidating, but ideally, you know, you'll want to be able to do this on your own without having to rely on the author. But this is a good example. You know, with this example, I feel like you can take the ideas from this example and use this example to do a lot of the exercises in this section. So even though the author doesn't provide like tons of solutions, they do provide some. And I feel like the examples in the book are pretty good. These are the exercises for the same section and you can see that the first few problems are very, very similar to the example that the authors provided. So I think that's really good. I think that you can read this book and you can learn a lot of mathematics from it. This is from the section on images and inverse images of sets. And this is a pretty good section. Here they have a really big theorem and they have A, B, C, and D. Looks like they prove A and they prove B, and parts C and D are left as exercises, which I honestly think is okay. Ideally, you wanna be in a position where you can prove all of these, no problem at all, and I think you can. I think once you understand proof structure, and once you see some of the examples they give, and once you really understand the definitions of you know, the image of A under F, that's this set here, and the pre-image here, once you understand these definitions and you understand proof structure, you should be able to do those problems. Here are some of the exercises for this section. You can see they start off computationally and they go from there. So we just turn the page here so we can get a look at some of the other ones here. Quite a few exercises in this section and they get harder as you progress further in. My only complaint is that it would have been nicer if they had more solutions, but I feel like this is very comparable to other books. Like you're gonna get some solutions, but you're not gonna get all, which is very, very typical in most math books. This is the section on homomorphisms and isomorphisms. So it actually does contain an entire chapter on groups and they talk about homomorphisms and isomorphisms, which I think is pretty cool because once you know how to prove something is onto and one-to-one, -one, all you need is the definition of uh, you know a group homomorphism and then you can show a function is an isomorphism. So it's kind of a nice transition to give people, I think, a look at some higher level math, even though this is still an introductory book. The most important section in this entire book is the section on methods of proof. And this is a great section because it gives you lots of introductory proofs and you can learn how to actually write proofs. Once you learn like the proof structure, 
you got this, right? You can get so much better at mathematics, but it takes people a very, very long time to really learn proof structure. And I think this book does a pretty good job at it. I think it does a good job at trying to teach people how to write mathematical proofs. Here is their first introductory proof in the section on methods of proof, and they do a pretty good job. It says proof. The hypothesis is n is an odd integer, that's this piece here. And the conclusion is n squared is odd, that's this piece here. So we begin by assuming that n is odd. So you actually have to write, you know, assume n is odd or suppose n is odd. Then by definition, there is an, turn the page here, integer k such that n is equal to 2k plus 1. And then you have to show that uh, n squared is also odd. So basically you just square it, look at the result, and then you end up with this. So by definition, it is odd. So pretty good explanation. And again, there's more than one. There's plenty of examples in this section um, where you can you know, look at the proofs and learn from those proofs. This section is really cool and it's got a lot of little fun problems. It's the contradiction method of proof. Those are always really fun proofs. And they give you a really cool example here where you have to show that there do not exist prime numbers A, B, and C such that A cubed plus B cubed equals C cubed. Now, this is a really fun proof and um, I won't go through all the details, but it's just kind of cool they provide stuff like that in the book. And there's another one over here, it's also pretty fun. If A, B, and C are odd integers, then AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero does not have a rational solution. So really nice proofs. And again, I think one of the best things about this book is the exercises. Here you see all these other little fun problems that you can do that you can you know, spend some time thinking about to kind of sharpen your proof writing skills. And there's even more over here. I feel like this is almost like a bonus section where they have more proofs where again, they give you another really cool proof here that you can read through or try to work through or both. Turn the page, you've got another one. And then the exercises are fantastic, right? You've got more problems over here that you can spend time on trying to get better at proof writing. And then you've got a couple more over here, quite a few more actually. So biggest con is that really there's just not enough solutions. So the big question is, is it worth getting this book? I think the answer is yes. Um, I think it's a pretty good book. There's a bunch of other really good books too, like this, uh, that teach you how to write proofs. Um, but I think the more you have, the better, uh, because you get different examples. Again, the best things you get from this book are those examples in the book where they actually show you some proofs and you get really good exercises. And each book is different. You can get another book on proof writing by another author and it's gonna have different examples. It's gonna have different exercises. You'll find that as you look through these books, there's a lot of similarities. Most of these books have very similar sections and most of these books do have some similarity in the problems, but this one's got a lot of cool exercises that you don't see in other books and that's one thing that I personally really like about this book. It even has a chapter on combinatorial proofs, which I think is really cool. This is something that you don't see in a lot of proof writing books. Typically you learn about combinatorial proofs in a class like discrete mathematics. You might do a couple problems there where you, know, you do a combinatorial proof. Or if you take a class in combinatorics, then obviously you would do some combinatorial proofs. But it does have some combinatorial proofs and it does have some exercises uh, regarding combinatorics. So I think that's a big plus for a book like this. Chapter seven is on countable and uncountable sets. And I think they do a really good job uh, on this particular section. I've read portions of this and I thought it was very clear compared to some of the other books that I've looked at. So if you're interested in learning about countability and how to do proofs and how to prove that you know two sets uh, have the same cardinality and stuff like that, this book will teach you how to do that. And it's got plenty of exercises and plenty of examples. Overall, I think this is a really solid book if you are looking to either learn to write proofs or you are looking to get better at writing proofs because this book has a lot of really, really good exercises and a lot of them you won't see uh, in other books. The biggest con of this book, in my opinion, is that like most proof writing books, they don't have answers to all of the exercises. But I think that the examples that you see in this book are really good. I think the exposition is pretty good and the wealth of exercises that you get, again, you get so many problems here that you can work through. I think it makes up for 
the lack of solutions in some cases. But yeah, I'll try to look for this. I don't know if it's still in print. I will look and if I can find it, I will leave a link in the description. It's a fairly thin book as you can see, and it opens, you know, it lays flat too. And my copy is a hardcover. And this one is from 1992. Uh, I believe this is the, se it's the second edition. The first edition, uh, I believe is from 88. Yeah, here it says it. So I think this one's from 92, which is, you know, it's quite a while ago. 90 1992 was, well, we're in 2022 right now. So that was like 30 years ago. Yeah, 2002, 2012. Yeah, yeah, it's a long time, right? So yeah, good stuff. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you've learned something. I think it's a great book. And if you wanna to learn to write proofs, it's definitely one book that's worth picking up. I think it's always good to have many. Again, it's called Foundations of Higher Mathematics. And this one happens to be the second edition and it's by Fletcher and Patty. And if you're curious, I got this book because uh, someone left a comment and they said I should check it out. And I forgot who that person was, but I'm glad I checked it out. I really like this book. I'm really having fun doing the exercises. Good luck.